The views and opinions expressed in this show and the comments on this channel are those of the speakers or authors, and do not reflect or represent the views and opinions of MediaWorks Studios, a division of We Podcast Incorporated. Thank you for listening to KC Keeping It Real. I'm Kim, a communications professional, single mom, and lover of pop culture, current events, politics, and meeting interesting people. And now podcast host to KC Keeping It Real, where I talk to a variety of guests. Today, I'm joined by Joe Perry to talk about the Windsor-Essex Compassionate Care Community. Joe has a very impressive resume, so we're just going to go down that and maybe break a couple times so uh, he can elaborate on some of these very interesting things in his bio. Joe is originally from Prince Edward Island and got his early start in healthcare working with people who have developmental disabilities. He has a Bachelor of Social Work from the University of Windsor and then Masters of Social Work from Wayne State University. And this is where and when Joe found a new passion working with cancer patients and their families. He was an, the original student intern at Gilda's Club, a cancer support community named in honor of local Detroiter Gilda Wet Radner, who we all know and love from Saturday Night Live. Here, Joe was a program manager and eventually became executive director plus a mentor for program managers across North America, specializing in program development, where he showed how thousands of people could benefit from cancer support education and social events for men, women, and children. At Gilda's Club Detroit, Joe formed the first cancer support choir in North America, Gilda Singers, who are still performing today, 12 years after Joe returned to work in Windsor. Wow, that's pretty exciting. It was great uh, fun, Kim. Uh, yeah. We, uh, uh, we were approached by uh, a marketing agency uh, to be in a commercial. Uh, that's how we found <laughs> out we were the only cancer survivor choir in uh, the country. Wow. Uh, they had an idea of having a... Uh, a group of uh, patients as a choir, and uh, they started searching around uh, uh, the United States and couldn't find one, and then uh, somehow they uh, uh, heard tell of us. Wow, it's a small world then, right? It truly is. Like you would think in the United States there would have been one of these. Well, you know, I mean, this was uh, in the the early 90s and stuff like that, so uh, 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 I think it just uh, hadn't become popular yet. So then you wanted to start a similar club in Windsor like they had in Toronto and Montreal. So first on your list was to visit with Carol Derbyshire, who we all know and love from the Hospice of Windsor. So then you began your career in palliative and end-of-life care, and it was here that you, Joe, expanded your practice by including elements of dignity therapy in your approach. Now, do you still speak with Carol? Oh, yes. I just uh, talk to Carol almost daily. Really? Uh, just got off the phone with her uh, before coming here. Uh, we're very excited that the uh, Hospice of Windsor has a new executive director. Uh, yeah, fresh uh, off the press. A friend of ours, uh, Nancy, uh, and uh, we wish her well in her new uh, role as executive director. Yeah, it's such a great organization and excited for her to uh, take over as leader there. And, you know, music has been such a big part of uh, Joe's life. He has been a major inter... He has, music has been a major intervention method throughout your career. So you have worked with um, different entities and uh, worked uh, with one special wellness center member, Bill Pilon, G- for, and formed Jammin' for Wellness. And now this is virtual, and you're involved in a research study on how playing live music can support patients and their families. Fascinating. How is that going? Uh, Really well. Uh, We've just been accepted. Uh, I'm working in collaboration. Uh, You know, all of these things happen in a group. Yes. uh, With Mike Bennett, who uh, from hospice, that's doing his uh, doctoral program. And uh, one of the instructor there, uh, Felka, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they put this uh, grant together, and uh, we received, uh, you know, funding for it. And now uh, that the results are coming in, we've been uh, asked, or Mike has been asked, to start presenting at palliative care con- uh, conferences around uh, North America and uh, and uh, Europe. Wow! So uh, once again, uh, people are interested in uh, seeing what we're doing here in Windsor, mm-hmm. Ontario, and. Uh, 
you know, due to Carol, uh, Windsor has always been a leading edge of uh, palliative care. Yes. And, uh, you know, not just here in Windsor, but uh, Ontario and really across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, she's done an outstanding job of uh, bringing awareness to the needs of uh, palliative care uh, patients as uh, Canadian Mental Health mm. has done for, uh, you know, people with mental health issues. Right. Yeah. It's that's that's awesome. And I recall um, previously I worked at the University of Windsor and uh, we were able to bring um, some music therapy to the hospice village. So that was pretty cool. Yes. Uh, and that's when I uh, joined. OK. Uh, uh, the music therapy program yes. was there. Uh, I can't remember the professor's name right off the top. of my head. Sandy no. Curtis. Yes, right. That's right. Sandy. Wow. A name from blast from the past. Yes, because I did my electives in music therapy. Uh, being a musician, uh, I took all of my uh, social work electives in music therapy okay. because I thought it uh, was an excellent compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, the work that I had done with uh, sexually abused children and uh, runaway and homeless kids really showed me that as opposed to asking you know, how are you feeling, uh, that if we talk to them about their favorite songs, all of their issues and their traumas uh, could be explored uh, through something that they enjoyed as opposed to uh, dredging up painful memories. Hmm. Uh, so uh, I utilized that approach and I found it to be very successful, and uh, especially when the kids started writing their own music hmm. and uh, lyrics to their own uh, songs or poems. Uh, because these became uh, vehicles for them to express. And I went through that myself, uh, losing my dad at 15. Mm -hmm. uh, had my own uh, mental health issues, uh, uh, drug addiction and alcoholism at 15. And, wow. Uh, so, uh, you know, these traumas of life uh, are not easy to deal with, and yeah. uh, you need support. And that's why we're uh, proud to uh, partner with uh, Canadian Mental Health. Nice. Wow, that's quite a quite a story and, and speaks to that, that impact that... Uh, music and can have on on your life um so during your time at hospice you continued your work as a bereavement counselor and eventually became senior manager um as director of patient and family services where you remained until your retirement but that didn't last long because after five months looking at the walls <laughs> joe returned to his passion utilizing music and community as intervention methods to help the dying the fragile and the vulnerable by joining the windsor essex compassion care community team headed by deb sadler and we're going to get into that so now joe is continuing his other passion of educating up and coming healthcare workers which is so important now more than ever you are currently mentoring 42 students, holy cow, showing their clients how increasing community connections, formal and informal, can improve their quality of life. The Compassion Care team and the students have just launched a virtual Compassion Care Community Center where they host 50 plus programs that once again provide opportunities to create connections that improve quality of life and confirm that our community is where physical, emotional, and spiritual health can be found and that a little kindness goes a long way in curing many of the ills found in society. As always, Joe says health is in the community not in your therapist's office. I love that. Um, so, I mean, there is so much here to, to get into. But first and foremost, I mean, you came out of retirement during the pandemic. Is that right? Uh, yes, yeah. So how have you been doing through this whirlwind of, of a year? And, I mean, you moved into this position and it had to be virtual from the get-go. Well, uh, you know, uh, just as everybody else in the community, mm -hmm. uh, uh, virtual has been forced upon us. Yes. Uh, in order to keep everybody safe. And, uh, and uh, just as with everything, uh, it's had some limitations, but it's also provided uh, many more opportunities mm -hmm. than we could have imagined. True. Uh, you know, I just uh, had our first uh, coffee house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always had a coffee house at everywhere I worked. And... Our typical crowd would be, you know, somewhere 20 to 30 people. But in our very first night, we had uh, 50 people and wow. another 50 uh, that couldn't figure out how to sign on. So <laughs> we actually would have had 100 people. That's fantastic. And, uh, so uh, once again, and we had people from uh, Prince Edward Island and uh, British Columbia and uh, a number of uh, people that I worked with in uh, Michigan. Uh, people at Gilda's Club uh, still follow me around. Uh, we do a lot of musical uh, things we go over and play at Gillis Club usually once a year, uh, once again to see everybody and uh, spread the joy of music, uh, because uh, 
as you can imagine, uh, not all uh, of uh, uh, the ills that we go through are going to be uh, cured. Sure. Uh, so uh, oftentimes uh, music and having some food and uh, sharing some camaraderie and uh, a social time uh, uh, buffers the, the pains of uh, going through uh, some of our challenges. Nice. Now, can you share with everyone what is the Windsor-Essex Compassionate Care Community? Because I'm sure not everyone is familiar. No, we're a fairly new organization, even though we've been around five years. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, when you start a new organization, it takes a long time to develop a, a relationship with community partners and secure funding and uh, all of these things that need to happen to uh, uh, allow a professional organization to get off the ground. Uh, this has uh, been a, a research uh, a pilot uh, sponsored by uh, Trillium, uh, Green Shield, uh, our local Lynn uh, in Erie St. Clair here, and they've all been generously uh, s providing the funds to uh, hire the staff uh, and to uh, support the work that we do with people in the community. The idea is very simple. Uh, this is a, a global effort. It's not unique to uh, Windsor. Uh, this is all around the world in many different countries. We just got off the phone today with uh, Dr. Julian Abel in, uh, in the United Kingdom, mm. uh, where uh, one of the mentors that uh, we've been following as we, uh, the progress, uh, Deborah's developed the program. And, uh, but uh, Deborah has also uh, added many uh, elements to the program that are unique to us uh, here in Canada and our own healthcare system. And uh, these things, uh, you know, evolve through uh, the collaborations of many partners. And, uh, and really what it is, is that uh, we work with the public uh, to provide uh, support, uh, referral to uh, formal resources that they may not be aware of but also to help them explore the informal resources that are, I always say, are in their own backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, whether it's neighbors or family or community centers or uh, uh, such uh, religious organizations or wherever they find comfort and support, uh, oftentimes uh, these can be uh, re-engaged and uh, or expanded upon uh, to provide uh, relief in times of stress and, uh, uh, and uh, when people need help. And that's really what the, is at the core of the program. Uh, as uh, COVID has come in now and forces all into the virtual world, uh, we felt being as we couldn't do face-to-face, -face, we were doing uh, telephone and computer support, uh, we have uh, moved into providing a virtual community center. Uh, once again, uh, we have uh, education, uh, um, uh, support groups and activities and social events, a lot of fun things. Uh, this afternoon, they were having comedy club. So uh, fun. Once uh, again, uh, we need uh, some of these uh, uh, reliefs to uh, help us uh, uh, cope with daily uh, life. And uh, we've been getting a tremendous response. Once again, uh, being as it's virtual, it's opened up uh, more than Windsor and Essex. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had people participate as far as Europe. Wow. Uh, so uh, uh, it's really, a, I guess, a global program. Sure. So it, it, we mentioned Deb Sattler earlier. So how did that work? Did she bring like the concept to uh, Carol or how did that all like come, yes, to come it, about? Uh, once again, uh, <laughs> Carol was at a meeting and met Deborah <laughs> okay. uh, in Toronto. Uh, uh, Carol is on the, the board of uh, Hospice Palliative Care Ontario and uh, many other committees around Ontario and uh, met, uh, seen a presentation that Deborah uh, uh, made uh, to uh, community leaders and uh, thought, wow, this is uh, basically what we're doing at the Hospice of Windsor, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, utilizing different language, but many of the same uh, compassionate elements uh, that we do, uh, do in palliative care mm -hmm. and dignity therapy. So uh, Carol thought it was a perfect match, and she invited Deborah to come down, and five years later, uh, we're here we are. still here, and, uh, and I'm just uh, honored to be a part of it all now. Oh, that's fantastic. So, and I recall being at some of those meetings, and um, Carol is such a phenomenal leader and respected by so many in this community and beyond. Like, everyone, every, so many organizations were in that room and wanting to, to be part of it, right? It was uh, pretty, pretty exciting. And really, um, my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but these volunteers that work in the program or go through kind of really extensive training um, and then connect with the individual 
and can help them just do wellness checks or if they're seeking um, a program or support in the community can help those linkages. Is that correct? That's absolutely uh, it, Kim. Okay. Uh, there's uh, really kind of two levels. Uh, we have our uh, staff team, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm a part of, and then we have our uh, group of uh, trained volunteers. Uh, in my role as, uh, you know, director at hospice, I oversaw the volunteer program. So uh, I adopted many of the elements that we had created for the volunteer program in our training for uh, uh, the a role that the, uh, the volunteers were going to do with the compassionate community. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, reaching out to people, but not just being a friendly visitor, but really kind of working a goal plan. Nice. Uh, the people that we work with are invited to uh, really reflect on their quality of life and identify some of the issues that they like help with. Mm -hmm. uh, we help them formulate then a goal plan, uh, find them resources uh, such as Canadian Mental Health or uh, many of those informal resources that I was talking about mm -hmm. uh, to really uh, uh, provide that other 23 hours of care right. that we don't get in our therapist's office. Yeah. Uh, once again, I always say health is in the community and that's where we live and that's where we want our uh, 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 community to live is uh, not in uh, hospitals or uh, treatment centers or whatever, yep. but in their community where uh, we all belong. Yeah, for sure. Now, is there any age limitations on who can access the program? No, uh, just as with, uh, you know, most agencies, uh, children uh, under 16 would have to have uh, parental consent mm -hmm. and stuff uh, to participate. But no, there's uh, uh, no age. But I would say the majority of the people that we are seeing during COVID are often uh, lonely and isolated people, Kim, uh, uh, usually in their uh, later 50s or, mm -hmm. uh, or older and stuff. Uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, they're not working or perhaps are retired themselves now and are finding uh, COVID a very stressful period yeah. that they can't see family and friends. For sure. This is, it's more important than ever. Now, do you have to live in Windsor and Essex County to access the program? Uh, not really, uh, Kim. Uh, as I said, our virtual program uh, makes it global. Uh, we have many uh, people uh, tune in. Uh, to our support and education programs and social events uh, that are all from all, all over the province and uh, really all over the country. Uh, uh, our, our, uh, I guess our uh, official boundary is uh, Windsor and Essex County. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, the population that we see uh, are, uh, are mandated to serve. Uh, but once again, uh, the virtual world has really kind of expanded the borders of uh, sure. those limitations. Yes, and there's no cost. No, everything we do, I'm uh, proud to say, Kim, I've never worked in an agency that charged anything wow. in my career. Good for I you. have my own private practice <laughs> <laughs> that I can't be quite so generous with, but uh, all the agencies I've worked with have been nonprofits. Now, you are mentoring all these students, so are they all at the University of Windsor or from various schools? No, uh, we have uh, relationships actually with many universities and colleges around Ontario and actually have... Uh, virtual students uh, uh, starting in the fall from uh, Toronto and uh, mm -hmm. Kingston, Ontario and uh, other places. And uh, so we have uh, Masters of Social Workers from uh, uh, the University of Windsor as uh, we have uh, Bachelor of Social Work students. But we also have uh, the Social Service Worker students from St. Clair College mm -hmm. in the Gerontology Program. Yep. And uh, uh, they're a perfect fit for us as we are dealing with many seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have the necessary skills to you know, provide that uh, compassionate uh, support to uh, seniors and uh, share with them the many resources that have been developed uh, by the United Way and uh, the collective efforts to uh, combat, uh, you know, isolation and uh, loneliness during COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is interested in being a volunteer, what is, does that involve? Uh, really, it's just reaching out to us. Uh, you know, Janice Maroon is our volunteer uh, coordinator and manager, and uh, she would invite you to a training session, and you would begin your training. Uh, much in the same way, uh, we uh, adopt a very similar uh, structure to uh, hospice. Uh, uh, we provide many hours of training, uh, some of it virtual now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you don't have to be in a person to do the training. So there's uh, we actually just trained a group of uh, volunteers from uh, LaSalle Parishes uh, virtually. Mm. Uh, once again, uh, we can't stop uh, training people just mm -hmm. because we're in a pandemic. There's lots of work to do. And uh, many of our volunteers are retired professionals that have many years of experience in working with the public. So uh, I always say, uh, you know, we're not just uh, plucking uh, uh, 
children off the sidewalks mm -hmm. and uh, putting them in these roles. Uh, often uh, they're nurses and doctors and social workers in their uh, careers and uh, now are willing to uh, help support the efforts of uh, agencies and uh, uh, initiatives, uh, especially during COVID. Right. So if someone wanted to access the program, how does that referral work? Like, it, can you be self-referred or do you have to go through an organization? No, absolutely, uh, Kim, as in any uh, type of uh, uh, agency that's kind of, uh, you know, working with uh, all sectors of the population. Uh, they can refer themselves, their doctor, social workers. It really doesn't matter. Okay, that's good. So there's no no barriers. No barriers. Uh, this, this is a, uh, the community healing the community. Uh, right. Uh, and... Uh, there's no barriers to accessing your community. Yeah. And I recall when I was in like some of the sessions learning about the program that it really was meant to replicate, you know, quote unquote, the good old days when you could rely on your neighbors or people in your community for supports and assistance and, you know, some of those things. That's right. And what the research has shown, Kim, is that uh, a lot of uh, research has been gone in to see uh, why do people live longer and live happier lives? And mm -hmm. what they found is that it has nothing to do with exercise or smoking or drinking or any of these things that we thought were the determinants of uh, living a long and happy life, but it's actually about social relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a community and uh, uh, over in, uh, off of Italy uh, where everybody lives to 100, the men and women. Everyone, wow. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, what they found is that they wake up with purpose in the morning, uh, they still garden and uh, work and uh, take care of uh, children, and mm -hmm. they uh, have a reason to live. Uh, they do a lot of socializing. They don't worry about what they eat. Uh, they enjoy food and uh, dance and uh, the pleasures of life, and uh, they live a long time. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of research, and I would uh, direct people to uh, look on TED Talks, if anybody mm -hmm. likes TED Talks, and look up uh, Susan Pinker, okay. How to Live to 100. Uh, P-I-N-K-E-R, and uh, she has the best 16 minutes of advice I think anybody will ever find. Huh, I'm checking that out. Now, why aren't we all replicating this then? <laughs> well, I think, you know, uh, as uh, most things in life, uh, uh, Kim, uh, uh, we're slow to learn. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, things have to evolve, and uh, 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 it's one of the reasons that we like to get together with our community partners. I'm on a committee with the Children's Aid Society looking at sexual abuse. And uh, once again, we have to get together and discuss these uh, uh, issues and try to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say when we get uh, more than uh, one person together, then we have uh, twice as many good ideas as uh, when we uh, try to work uh, on these complex issues alone. Yes. And I do know that uh, just in the last month, I, I read an article and I actually shared it on um, my social media, that loneliness and isolation at its extreme can be the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Right. Like that much devastating impact to your, your physical health. And that equals uh, taking 15 years came off of your life. Wow. So instead of living to 90, you would be looking at 75. Yeah. Uh, 75, you would be looking at 60. Mm -hmm. If I, uh, you know, uh, um, look at it that way, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Now, what are some of the most exciting outcomes of, that you've seen so far of people that have participated in the program? Well, one of the things uh, that, uh, you know, uh, I've been privileged, uh, Kim, as uh, you, uh, being a senior manager, uh, to hear uh, wonderful stories. Uh, and I've had many uh, wonderful stories in my career in cancer patients and hospice and now with the, the compassionate community. But one that really struck me uh, was the one that was in the newspapers. Um, uh, uh, one of our clients uh, who was bed bound uh, in a small room, uh, wasn't able to uh, get out of bed and care for herself. Uh, wasn't seeing many people, and uh, really just wanted an opportunity uh, to socialize more. So uh, we got her a hospital bed uh, through hospice and uh, uh, a generous donation by a member of the community, uh, donated a, 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 a basically a brand new hospital bed for her, and we moved her into the living room. Mm. And while this may not seem like a very big effort, uh, it uh, changed her world enormously, mm -hmm. uh, allowed her to, uh, care providers to uh, 
easily access her to uh, that her care was less painful and allowed it her friends and family uh, to come and visit her. Uh, once again, uh, 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 many of us take these things for granted, uh, but uh, it was one story that touched me. Another one uh, was uh, one of our staff uh, uh, was supporting people at the downtown mission. Uh, once again, I have uh, students placed in uh, many agencies uh, mm -hmm. throughout the city. Uh, the downtown mission was one at that time, and uh, uh, they worked uh, with the people and John Dunn and his team down there uh, and uh, working with the homeless. And uh, where we really saw improvement in the quality of life was when the homeless started volunteering. Uh, they would uh, start serving meals and uh, cleaning up, and uh, you could see the difference uh, in uh, how they presented themselves, mm. how they held themselves, and how they uh, felt that now they had... Uh, once again, purpose and uh, uh, develop some skills. And the first thing you know, uh, they're asking where they can get a haircut. And uh, we work with wow. Assumption Cares that provides uh, free haircuts for uh, homeless people and people looking for employment that can't afford uh, to get their hair uh, uh, cut. And uh, once again, uh, we've seen uh, great stories uh, where people have regained their lives, found employment, uh, and uh, moved into secure housing. Uh, as we all know, uh, homelessness is a huge issue here mm -hmm. in Windsor, as it is in many uh, cities around uh, Ontario and uh, Canada. And uh, uh, so those are some of the stories. But uh, I, like you, Kim, uh, I could keep you here for, yes. for a month. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, you mentioned earlier when you had your, your coffee break session and you had 50 people, but then you had 50 people that couldn't get on. So... It's kind of um, a good, good, bad thing, right? That yes, we're you're able to continue offering your programs and supports because of virtual offerings, but it's also a barrier for some people as well, right? The technology. Absolutely, Kim, and that's why we're advocating. You know, uh, we're uh, meeting with the city planners uh, mm -hmm. once again, uh, being a part of uh, many of the community initiatives to uh, have a free internet service uh, for uh, citizens. Uh, we see it as a basic human right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We all have to do our banking and other services online. And uh, there's many generous uh, people like uh, 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 Computers for Kids that uh, will give uh, free computers to uh, not only children, but uh, seniors. And uh, there's many programs. The library just started a program of loaning co computers and fire sticks to uh, seniors for three weeks so that they can access some of these programs. So I think uh, as uh, uh, Maura Purden from the Lynn uh, said to me, she's never seen such an effort of collaboration oh. uh, since uh, COVID has happened. And we hope that we maintain that enthusiasm mm -hmm. uh, to help people uh, that uh, she's seen in these past 12 months. I totally agree. That's been um, my experience as well. It's just coming together and trying to work towards the common good. And it's it's really, you can do so much more together. Than... That's right. It's very heartwarming. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, all of us uh, talk of silos uh, mm -hmm. as we uh, uh, worry about funding and uh, these issues. But, uh, you know, our uh, current government has been very uh, generous uh, mm -hmm. with su providing support for COVID relief and uh, uh, and uh, many of us uh, have uh, uh, been involved in those efforts, and we're happy to do so. Now, I want to talk about this, uh, these virtual programs that you're offering, because these sound amazing. Like, I saw this list, and I was like, I need to register for some of these. So we, you have everything from Tai Chi, armchair travel, meditation, understanding your brain, dancing, caregiving for serious illness, comedy, who puts all these amazing programs together? Well, um, uh, with 42 students, uh, <laughs> uh, all of them have to do at least one program ah. or, or, uh, or uh, operate in pairs. Uh, so a lot of the programs, but the majority of the programs, Kim, are offered by other uh, people in the community. Uh, once again, uh, we partner. We see ourselves as a, a hub of information, not necessarily a service provider and in all instances, but really providing linkages to uh, great programs that are going on. Uh, once again, you'll see all the programs are free. Yes. Uh, but there's many initiatives uh, uh, in uh, Windsor and uh, Ontario and across Canada uh, that people can access, and we're just trying to make the public more aware of these great programs. That is fantastic. Now, are you ever looking for suggestions? Absolutely, Kim. Uh, what we're doing now is uh, 
we're developing channels. Oh. Uh, we're going to have a mental health channel uh, where education, support, and uh, social activities can be provided. Uh, we're going to have a seniors channel, uh, developmental disabilities, uh, a youth channel, uh, um, um, uh, all of these uh, different areas uh, where people that are experiencing um, um, or looking for resources in these different areas can go and easily find them. Saint, there was I missed the St. Patrick's Day sing along. We had a ball. <laughs> You know, you got to see rollicking uh, Joe O'Perry uh, uh, having a great time. And uh, as uh, Jerry uh, uh, told us, uh, head his to toes a tapping. Wow. There's a book club, a bingo, and then you teach guitar too, I saw, right? Right. It's something I've always done, Kim, is uh, oh. give free guitar lessons to uh, adults and children. You uh, have? Uh, throughout my whole career uh, uh, in Calgary and uh, Detroit and Windsor now, mm. uh, uh, because I find uh, that we have to share our talents, Kim. Uh, so we encourage all of the, your listeners to uh, yeah. share their talents and sure. and volunteer for uh, these organizations that are doing great work. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, reap the benefits of getting involved in your community. Yeah. Uh, once again, we find that uh, volunteering, especially for seniors or people uh, perhaps that uh, are lonely and isolated really opens a doorway to meeting others and forming friendships uh, and uh, finding places of employment and housing and all of these things that we uh, take for granted. Uh, but once again, uh, when you get involved in your community, you get to see all the opportunities that are out there. Mm -hmm. I love this too, Story Corner, Story Corner with Mayred. It's a 10 year old. Yes, that's a, a <laughs> friend of mine. Uh, uh, once again, uh, Kathy and I lived in uh, Alberta for uh, 15 years and uh, uh, this is a friend of mine's daughter 10 year old daughter and she has her own YouTube channel oh gosh. for reading uh, stories and uh, now we're going to be promoting that to hospitals oh. for pediatric units uh, once again to reach out to kids that are uh, perhaps uh, lonely and isolated due to medical issues and uh, we think it's a real fun time I listen every Saturday and <laughs> and uh, join it just as a uh, uh, as I uh, enjoyed uh, reading stories to my own children well, when they were growing fantastic. up. That's fantastic. Now, personal question, just because I have some people in my house trying to learn the ukulele. Right. So is that like if you learned guitar, do you know ukulele? Absolutely. Is that, okay, uh, then I'm going to share Four strings, this. Uh, just six, <laughs> six strings on the guitar, but four on the ukulele. Okay, that sounds good. Now, you shared before we hit record that there's some exciting things happening in April. Can you share? Well, I can share one thing. Okay. Uh, and, and that's our Kids Talent Show, uh, All right. Kim. Sure. Uh, we're having, uh, uh, I guess, a rebranding, and uh, this is going to be our signature event. Mm -hmm. uh, we are inviting all the children in Windsor and Essex County uh, to participate in a virtual talent show. So once again, uh, I don't know too many kids that don't have a cell phone or uh, know how to make a video. And uh, we'll have instructions uh, soon now in April uh, on how to make your video so that you uh, we get your name and phone number and your parents' consent. And you can share uh, your talent with us, That's whether awesome. you sing or dance or, uh, uh, or a comedian or a magician <laughs> or uh, stand on your head. I don't really care what you do. Uh, but uh, the winners are going to get $1,000 each for uh, lessons in their chosen talent and, oh. uh, or to buy equipment. Uh, nice. uh, such a, if you needed a new guitar, uh, we'd give you $1,000 to go out and purchase one. That is awesome. I can't wait to see the uh, the winners. Or, or is it going to be public, like when you yes, showcase uh, who wins? Yes, that's part of uh, the winner's uh, uh, criteria is that they will have to agree to... Uh, uh, post uh, uh, their video on the on the internet on yeah. our uh, 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 social media sites, uh, but also there's another element, Kim, is that we're inviting all the children to reach out to their grandparents and extended family in other countries because mm. once again uh, we want this to be a global event yeah. and not just restricted to uh, for the audience to uh, Windsor Essex uh, because many of our children are newcomers to uh, Canada mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, and to Windsor, and uh, we want their families overseas. Uh, uh, as uh, with my coffee house, uh, we have family in Finland who are going to be performing uh, in our international uh, coffee house in May uh, stuff. So once again, we're trying to turn uh, all of these things uh, global. That is so exciting. I can't wait. So yeah, we'll be sure to um, share information about that when it becomes 
available. But just to be clear, though, Kim, the kids have to live in Windsor or Essex okay. County. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. We can't uh, view all the, the videos <laughs> of kids from around the world. That would be a big <laughs> undertaking. That would be uh, significant. We're, we're a little scared about the number of videos that are going to come in for this one. I can't imagine. Uh, <laughs> you, just the kids at Walkerville alone, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So just talking about music a little bit more. Um, did you you mentioned before you know you 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 were an addict did did music serve you in that space of your life as well like was well, music always something you went to as a support it really was kim uh you know it, it seems so funny now that i'm a grief counselor mm -hmm. uh but uh in those days when my dad died there was no such thing as grief counselors there yeah. was no social workers uh I didn't see the chaplain at the hospital when my dad died, and uh, there was no support. Uh, so somebody handed me a guitar, and it was the best thing that uh, somebody ever did for me. And despite my uh, many years of addictions, uh, you know, till I got to my early 20s, uh, the guitar was a constant companion. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me a, a way of expressing my grief that I didn't have words for as a, as a youth. Um, you know, uh, I always uh, asked the kids, uh, you know, uh, uh, about their feelings, and uh, they uh, go, oh, Joe, uh, stop asking. Uh, it feels shitty. Uh, you know, what do, what do you think it feels like? Mm -hmm. And uh, I relate to that because that's what I lived through. I didn't have the words to uh, put to my feelings at 15. Yeah. Uh, as a male, I wasn't even allowed to say I missed my dad or loved my dad. Mm. Uh, once again, you had to pull yourself up by your bootstraps or during those days in the uh, 70s and mm -hmm. uh and earlier, and uh, you were expected to uh, just carry on. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was, so guitar was the first thing you learned. Yes. And then you you do singing. Yes. And then do you know any other instruments? Uh, not really. I can pretty much pluck on uh, anything that has strings on it. Yeah. And I'm proud to say I just uh, recorded my first uh, uh, song uh, last night at 64. No. I'm going to be a recording artist. And uh, with the help of a local uh, recording engineer here in town and stuff like that. So uh, I feel like Grandma Moses today uh, <laughs> that I'm starting a, another new chapter. Kim. You know, you're, um, you keep reinventing yourself, Joe. Like, it, it's just you're on the move. Well... You know, I, after five uh, months of staring at the walls, Kim, <laughs> uh, I had to come up with something. <laughs> I'm sure you were not staring at the walls. I'm sure you were very busy. But where do we find this uh, this song when it's released? Uh, oh, you'll all hear it. Okay. Uh, it'll, it'll hopefully be uh, uh, easily accessible. Now, do you, you must miss performing in person. Well, we do, and I get the people in the hospice band calling me every day <laughs> saying when, when we, when's when? the next gig. Yeah. And we have all kinds of gigs lined up uh, once again, uh, but we're moving uh, once again to a virtual format. Uh, we had uh, uh, Rick Labonte and the Formula, local uh, celebrities here in town, mm. uh, play uh, the bar scene here in uh, Windsor, uh, perform at our coffee house. Uh, because once again, all of these things are possible through yeah. uh, the magic of the internet. Right. So we'll uh, be doing, uh, we've done some galas for uh, Cerebral Policy and uh, other charities, mm -hmm. uh, which is the majority of our work. Uh, we do get paid, yes. Uh, but then we give the money to hospice yeah. and, uh, as a donation for uh, their music program. So. And you guys can rock it out, let me just say. Well, you, uh, bring you know, it. I always say after 40 years, if you can't play three chords, uh, better move on to something else. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. Now, um, have you, I always ask um, people if they've been binging anything good over the last year because I you know always need to expand my repertoire uh well um uh, uh Kim uh you know me and uh, I've uh, uh suffered uh with weight issues for many oh. years and stuff like that so my binge has actually uh, been healthy things oh. uh, started riding a bike an hour a day from uh, seven to eight in the morning that's become very popular and uh I've now uh, started a group and uh with my neighbors uh that we ride together that's fantastic uh, so once again uh, a few old retired guys uh hopping on their bicycles uh pretending they're youngsters <laughs> and uh the other thing uh that we've uh binged on is that uh, uh my wife uh received a hot tub for her birthday so uh 
Uh, we've been enjoying the hot tub every day. So after bike riding, what's your address, for an hour, Joe? Uh, we have to soak <laughs> in the hot tub because we're full of aches and pains at this age. <laughs> well, you know what? Those are two of the hottest things, right? In in COVID, I was bikes. You couldn't find bikes last year, from what I understand. Everyone took it up. I get all my bikes uh, came from the garbage. Uh, so many people throw bikes away. I have uh, six bikes. If you need one, uh, come on over. I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they just need air in the tires, and okay. I put air in the tires and uh, ride them away. That is fantastic. And same as hot tubs. Those, I heard, are a waiting list. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's uh, that's awesome. Now, um, one question about the Compassion Care community. So I, I think, you know, and what I've learned at CMHA as well, or what we've learned is even in as we move into recovery of COVID, there's going to be things that stay, right? Um so I I hope that these sessions are going to stay virtual just so everyone can access them. Is that the plan? Well, I think that's the reality, Kim, yeah. uh, is that uh, uh, many agencies are not moving back to a storefront operation mm -hmm. uh, uh, totally. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, many of us are moving into a virtual format. Uh, just once again, uh, especially for uh, people in rural areas, it mm -hmm. makes it much more accessible. Uh, and uh, we're finding that uh, uh, all age groups, including seniors, are embracing the virtual world. Uh, as I said, uh, most people, 94% uh, of Canadians now have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And if we can just get free Internet access for people, uh, yeah. uh, everybody will be able to access uh, these programs in the comfort of their own home. Now, the, does the schedule change every month? Uh, yes, uh, the new, new calendar and all of these things are posted on our website okay. and Facebook pages and okay. all of our... Uh, uh, Twitter and all of these uh, things. So you're on. What? Where do people find you? What's the website? Uh, it's uh, www. Uh, 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 WEC. Uh, w, w e c c c dot c a. Yep. And uh, we're very easy to find. If you uh, want to see our virtual program, you just uh, put in uh, virtual compassion. Uh, care community center, and uh, it'll take you right to it. Fantastic. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about the Compassion Care community? Well, uh, once again, uh, Kim, uh, we're just encouraging people to uh, reach out. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you need help or uh, want to offer uh, support or help to others, uh, there's lots of uh, work to do. And uh, we just want to remind people, as Canadian Mel Mental Health uh, does every day, uh, that uh, life can change. Yes. And uh, But change uh, involves some action, mm -hmm. and uh, the community is uh, here uh, waiting to help you. Fantastic. Now, I have one more question, Joe, before I'm going to let you go. What do you do to keep it real? Well, uh, you'd have to ask my wife, <laughs> probably, <laughs> and stuff, but uh, uh, I'm not really any different at home than I am here, Kim. Yeah. Uh, I play guitar and sing. Uh, we've uh, done it uh, my whole life. Uh, uh, my children didn't grow up with Old MacDonald. They grew up with uh, Whipping Post by the Allman Brothers. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I guess we're a little bit of an eccentric family, uh, but uh, family's important to mm -hmm. us. Uh, 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 Kathy and I live for our children, uh, much to their regret some days. <laughs> uh, and uh, we will be following you around no matter where you move. So oh. uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we will track you down. And uh, But uh, family's uh, important to us. That's... Yeah. Always. Well, thank you so much, Joe. And I can't wait to uh, check out some of these sessions and the talent show and all of these great things going on. Be sure to check out the website that Joe mentioned. I'll also post it with um, this podcast. Um, you can follow them, like he said, on different social media. They're on Facebook at Virtual Compassion Care Community Center. Um, be safe, but keep connected. You can follow me on Twitter at KWillisM. I'm also on Facebook, uh, KC Keeping It Real. And uh, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave comments. Thank you for listening to this episode of KC Keeping It Real, recorded exclusively at the MediaWorks Studios located at 1030 Walker Road in Windsor, Ontario. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comments. For more exclusive content, local news, events, and exciting giveaways, make sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms. Like us on Facebook at MediaWorks Studios YQG. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at MediaWorks YQG. And we have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, MediaWorks Studios Windsor. That's it for this week. Talk to you later. Bye.